three guys who combined to play 15 seasons in the National Football League trenches. Well, two guys. And Mackey, who didn't do s***. This is the O-Line Committee. Your lucky day, audience, because this is a second episode, a bonus episode this week of the O-Line Committee. Jeremiah Searles, Alex Boone, Phil Mackey. Click that like button and the subscribe button on the YouTube channel. And the best thing you can do to help us keep growing this thing besides helping us grow YouTube is to help us grow the podcast side too with a five-star rating and a positive review on Apple or Spotify. And when you leave your comment on Apple or Spotify, let us know who your favorite obscure offensive lineman is (laughs) in your history watching football. Your the favorite levels. random left the guard. Random, the random O-lineman. You get to see some Love really fun names. I can't wait to there. see some names. I can't believe you said that. I'm so excited now to see what names come out. And we can read those on the show. So. The good old Rich That's Ornberger. Okay. Somebody brought that up to me over Rich the weekend. Ornberger. And I go, I miss that guy so much. We sat in the PA together. He was yeah. the funniest, funniest dude I've ever been around. He and was- he... He does Dude. radio in San Diego. He's doesn't? great. Dude, I love him. I was with him my rookie year, and he used to do this bit called Letters from Home. Oh, this is funny. And so he would write for all the rookies, and during training camp, he would write a letter from home from the rookie, and then the rookie had to get up in the front of the room and and read it with no idea what it said. And like yeah. so, and he was so good at like storytelling and putting in the personality of whoever that rookie was. Like the guy was up there reading it. Oh, I've never laughed harder. I've never laughed harder than when he used to make the rookies do that. So funny, Rich dude. Adam Dear Douglas, Dad, we- sniffle. Like <laughs> like it was so funny. Do we definitely, once we get through kind of the free agency draft period, we're going to be aiming for some guests during the offseason. Richie would be great. Oh, Rich would be great. Dude, Rich you, know who else, you know who else I'd love to bring in? And I don't know if you played with him, Jay, and this is off topic. Eric Wood. Yeah, you, I missed him by a year, but no, he'd be a great one, too. He was so funny. That was when they were like, hey, your neck's broken. You can't play anymore. He's I remember like, that. Got it. Okay, I retire. He was one of the, he was a tough dude, man. Like the, him and Richie together were, they were crazy, man. Yeah. Dude. So for the next, I don't know, 35, 40 minutes here on this little bonus episode, we're going to call it free agency quarterback chaos. Mm. I'm going to throw you, and we'll do it in in mic form. I'll throw out various mics. All of them are going to be quarterbacks, and we'll talk about their current situation and what you guys think. Let's start with Kirk Cousins. Kirky boy, you're the mic. Okay. So here's two quick snippets of national reports from the last two days. And then you guys tell me what you think. So it, it looks like the Falcons are going to be the most aggressive suitor starting on Monday if they aren't already the most aggressive suitor. In fact, Kevin O'Connell went on NFL Network with Rich Eisen a couple days ago and said, whether they're supposed to be or not, it seems like other teams are expressing interest in Kirk before the tampering period. But I mean, stop it. It's the combine. Stop it. Right. The whole combine is nothing but one giant tampering period. Yeah, come on. Knock it off. So, so Dan Graziano, ESPN NFL reporter, said, The sense I'm getting is the Vikings still want Cousins to return, but Cousins has a very specific idea in mind for what he wants in a new contract. Uh, money, years, guarantees, no trade, right? And the Vikings so far have not made an offer that matches it. And then Mike Florio came off the top rope last night with a very cryptic post on profootballtalk.com. And he writes, I can't get into the specifics for now, but we're getting very credible indications that Cousins is seriously considering moving his family to Atlanta which would mean, obviously, that he would be signing with the Falcons. Yep. So Mike Florio has like a moving company source or something. <laughs> yeah, right. So I'm sure source. it's somebody more credible than the Those moving company. Those dudes have sources everywhere. He's got two men, yeah. two men yeah. in a truck is sending. He's calling saying that Kirk Cousins <laughs> needs to be moved from Minnesota to Atlanta. Just yeah, send, no, I, Sends him I, an itinerary of Minnesota to Atlanta. He's like, I think it's Kirk. It's we, Kirk. We had kind of talked about this before we went to the Combine, but that was one of the things where it's, you know, the team feels the way they do, and when a team has basically been like, hey, man, we're capped out. Like, we have to pay other guys, a la Justin Jefferson. Like, we're going to have to pay some other dudes. We can't give you top-tier money. 
Kirk could easily be like, hey, man, free agency is where everybody gets overpaid. I'm just out of here. Peace. Like, you can just hit every every time free agency hits, you can be guaranteed that every market is going to get reset every single time. That's how free agency works. Yep. So if I'm looking at this from Kirk's idea, he's probably like, hey, listen, I know I'm going to get 45. He's the top two. quarterback free agent. For sure. Right. I'm going to get my 90 guaranteed somewhere. And all of a sudden, and here's where I'm thinking, Kirk. Looking at Atlanta, for the same reasons we just said J.J. McCarthy would do well there, I feel like Kirk would too, to have a nice balanced run game. And then all of a sudden we're doing these play actions off of it. Oh, and at the same time, I can step back and drop back at times. That's why this is so kind of interesting because there aren't a lot of quarterbacks that can sit back in the pocket 65 times a game and deliver a ball. And at the same time, do well with, oh, I can hand it off too and do play action. Like That's very rare. And so if I'm Atlanta, yeah. I'm coming in, but you have to remember, and this is the one thing that always holds me back, is an injury like an Achilles. It's just the unknown. Mm -hmm. People can go, he's going to be fine. You're lying. and You you have to admit you're lying. You don't know. Nobody knows how you're going to come out of this. Nobody knows if at the first OTA you're joking around and all of a sudden you go to plant. We just don't know. I've seen the flukiest, freakiest, craziest things happen. I've seen guys literally stand up and their knee just buckles. You just don't know when the body is like, we've had enough. Stress is so much sometimes. Money is a lot. I get it. But sometimes when you're looking at this, I think the Vikings, and especially with Quasi, he's probably like, dude, look, we just can't do that. We have to pay other people on this team or we will never get free agents while you're here. We won't be able to keep or sustain anything. It's just too much for us. It's fair. And I'm looking at Atlanta going, hey, man, that's not a bad idea. Well, Atlanta's did what I talked about in the first episode of building your team around a Desmond Ritter, right? Once Matt Ryan, you built your team around him and you went and got B. John Robinson. You have Kyle Pitts at tight end. You have Drake London, a true wide receiver one. You have one of the highest paid offensive guards in Alex Lindstrom. You have Matthews. Like You have pieces all around that you've built, and now you have the cap space to go out and buy your quarterback. Right, and then you start your two your two year window when you go buy a free agent quarterback. That you start your two year two year window of it's time to go win it all, right? And you've got a new head coach and Raheem Morris down there who's phenomenal, and yep. you've got all of this stuff that why not truly blank slate fresh start this thing with Kirk Cousins? And the only thing I think if Kirk was one hundred percent healthy, then this is a no brainer. Atlanta's throwing the farm oh, yeah. at Kirk Cousins. I think that would be the only thing that would hold them up of all this guaranteed money and everything up front is just the fact that he's coming off an Achilles injury. But I do think the Atlanta steam is real. I also heard the Atlanta, maybe they trade for Justin Fields. That kind of lost a little bit of steam as the week went on through the combine. Yeah. But I think it's a two-horse race. It's Atlanta or Minnesota. Yeah. I don't think there's a lot of other suitors. I don't think Pittsburgh's going to come in at the 11th hour and drop a giant thing. I don't think the Raiders are going to come in at the 11th hour. Like I really do think this is a two-horse race between Atlanta and the Vikings. I'll throw, I'll throw a third interesting horse in here, and, then, and I have a couple thoughts on this too. So the, the athletic beat writer for the Commanders, Ben Standig, came out. And he said, because he was going through all the commanders, like who they might draft at number two. Could they move back, build their roster, this, that, the other? And he said, people have been asking about Kirk Cousins. And he said, based on a million different people I've talked to over two or three years, he would be open to coming back because the ownership is different. The front office is different. Like the whole, like everything's different. The name of the team is different. Like literally everything is different for, for the commanders. And, and, he would be open if the price was right. And the price that the athletic threw out was they could do like two years, $80 million largely guaranteed and, and compete with what the Falcons could give. But, so, but Kirk is still looking for that final piece, right? I think back to the quarterback documentary. Where he's like, here's this empty space in my trophy room that needs a Lombardi. Right. And if you're going to add that into the equation of the decision-making in this, do I want to go to the commanders that are in a division with Dallas and Philly Eagles. and the Giants? Or do I want to go to a division in the AFC South, right, which is Panthers. Carolina, Saints, Saints Tampa, Bucks, now that who don't like, have a quarterback yet? Who don't like yeah. looking mm-hmm. at it from a larger perspective, like, yes, if you go to the AFC, you have to get through Mahomes every year, right? That is a piece you got to get through Josh Allen every year. But I feel like that roster situation right now, and I mean, Washington has a ton of cap space, so I think they're going to be very active in free agency, and they have really high draft picks. But at face value, if that's in part of my decision-making, 
it's not even really close if I'm going to Atlanta or Washington. Atlanta's much better. Oh, Atlanta better. all the way. Atlanta's sure. much better built yeah. right now. Than and Washington. it's funny, like, there's, there, I see throughout the reporting, too, there's references to, you know, he's not going to give the Vikings a hometown discount. The Vikings in Minnesota are not his hometown. He was Correct. brought in six years ago as a mercenary to help push the Vikings over the t- to take an NFC championship team and be the, the final piece that brings them to the Super Bowl. They missed the playoffs the next year. They've won one playoff game in the six years. It's sort of mission failed from that perspective. Atlanta is more of a hometown for him and his wife than Minneapolis. I know they've raised their kids the last few years, and and, and that matters, but... His wife's family is from Atlanta. They got right. married in Georgia. His dad runs a church in in Orlando in the northern part of Florida. So in terms of his father and her family, Atlanta is probably more of a home base for them than the place they've been living the last six years. And I'm and, just like, I'm not sometimes, panel, I'm just projecting. And, and sometimes players really do feel like they need a fresh start sometimes. I agree. Right? Like, there's definitely players that as much as they love where they've been and they love what they've accomplished there, like they feel sometimes too like, I just need a new base, a new fan base. I need to reinvigorate kind of my my mojo, my, my juice. And as much, I mean, Obviously, Minnesota fans love Kirk, rightfully so. He's a fantastic dude. He's been a really good quarterback for us for a long time for the Vikes. But sometimes players are like, I just want a fresh start, right? If I'm going to go end my career somewhere, I want one more fresh start, one more run at this thing. Let's go do it. And I feel like Atlanta would be a really good spot for Kirk to do that. Yeah, I think, too, like taking a seven-win team to 10 is a perfect thing for Kirk Cousins. I don't know that he's the take a 10-win team to the Super Bowl. Because he, he's 36, he's never done it, right? Nine years, he has one playoff win. He's never been the final piece for a Super Bowl contender. But the Falcons right now, their first step is, can we go from seven wins and not making the playoffs to winning a division and maybe winning 10 or 11 games and just having a professional, competent, accurate quarterback to hit these weapons? They could also draft a receiver with the eighth pick. Right. Like, imagine putting, like, Roma Dunze next to Drake London. That would be incredible. That would you, be you, incredible. You could go edge rusher and beef up your defense, too, but, man. Yeah, I mean, Atlanta's, and they've got a lot of cap space. Like, they're going to be active in free agency, too, right? I mean, it's not just at the quarterback position, but some other spots and some key role spots. But, I mean, they've got a good old line, which Kirk Cousins proved this year. If you got behind a good old line and give him time, he can deliver where he needs to go. It's just going to be a full matter of, is he going to be truly 100% ready to go by September 1? Right. Last Kirk question that we can get to some of these other quarterbacks. Do you think, if he signs with Atlanta, do you think the Vikings will regret, even going back a year, not giving him a multi-year deal to to have him finish his career in Minnesota? Will the Vikings regret it? I don't think so. I think the Vikings are understand the cap space. They understand that they have the budding number one receiver in the world. You got. You can't let that guy out of the building. You can't sacrifice a 36-year-old quarterback to let a young stud wide receiver in this league walk. You just can't do it. And you can't have a $45 million quarterback and a $35 million receiver no. and then build the rest of your team of where it needs to be. And it's a just, $17 million tight end, by right. the way. It's yeah. a really, you're, starting, you're talking about four or five guys eating up 80% of the cap. Like that just not physically possible. That's why they will not regret it. They're looking at it like, no, this is business. I think business side, like fandom wise, maybe like fandom wise. And again, I think people get honest on this show sometimes and really on all national talking heads about talking about the X's and O's of the business side. I mean, I can't tell you, I ran into one of my favorite GMs in the world in the combine this year. Same one I'm thinking of. I didn't get a chance to meet with him like truly during the week. Um, It was kind of like one of those informals. We ran into each other and just got a chance to talk. I was like, buddy, how are you this week? And he's like, dude, it's not been a fun week. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, dude, we're fifty million over the cap. He's like, all my meetings this week have just been talking about, hey, I can't sign your guy in free agency, and talking to guys, agents on my team that are like, hey, we're either gonna have to cap casualty cut you, we're gonna have to trade you, we're gonna have to ask you to take a pay cut. I thought the cap like, was fake. What are you talking about? Right, but like that's that's a that's the part that these GMs have to run and do because it's so hard year after year, especially when you're paying top tier quarterback to keep yourself under the cap and still be a highly competitive team like the cap guys the cap guys in the nfl Insane. are the unsung Insane. heroes of every team the way that they <clears throat> manage the cap and move things around and make it so that they're right on that line of like we're, we're paying to the cent 
right? And it's why you can't pay a backup linebacker 2.1. We have to pay him 1.6 so that we can yeah. save that five million, that 500,000 to put allocate elsewhere. Like those, they're not easy to do. And Quazy's in a similar position where you're looking down the road and you're looking down the, the future of what are the players that need to get paid? Where are the cap hits in 26 and 27? And understanding that and trying not to hamstring your team with paying quarterback top dollars. So from a fan perspective, yeah, there's always a chance if he goes down to Atlanta and he puts a 10-11 team and goes to the playoffs and wins a playoff game, we could be sitting there going, damn, we let Kirk Cousins go. But I think from a business standpoint, from a money standpoint, from an X's and O's standpoint, I appreciate what Minnesota is doing and trying to build for the future. Justin Fields is the next Mike here. Mm -hmm. And according to, so they're, they're looking to trade him according to pretty much everyone who's plugged in because they're probably going to take Caleb Williams with the number one pick. And according to ESPN's Jeremy Fowler, the bears will need multiple teams in the fray to drive an actual market for fields. But after asking around, I expect Atlanta, Pittsburgh, Las Vegas, and he throws the Vikings on this list too to be on the radar for a Justin Fields trade. I don't know if they're going to get a second round pick for Fields, but where would you guys like to, A, do you think he is a viable starting quarterback, a guy that you might pay as a franchise quarterback in a couple of years? And where would be the most fun landing spot to rejuvenate Justin Fields' career? Atlanta, Pittsburgh, Las Vegas, Minnesota, and anywhere else that wasn't listed here. I mean, first of all, I still, I'm still kind of a big believer in keeping Justin Fields in Chicago, trading the number one pick and building your roster much like Atlanta did, and then being able to go and uh, being able to go and then buy a free agent quarterback in a couple of years if you need to. Like I still think that's a very viable option for Chicago. Like I don't think that's so like full. use your two top ten picks on do trade the number one overall get another first this year get another first next year and a couple seconds couple thirds like that's a you highly load coveted up. you could load, load up, up with picks right <laughs> load up with especially picks. for what you talked about Jay the twenty twenty five twenty twenty six yeah twenty five so yeah that's a that's whole crazy when you just, said that I was so like, one <sighs> thing projecting down the road a little sidebar here projecting down the road as an agent in twenty twenty six there's gonna be a meteor and an asteroid that are colliding on an absolute collision course in college football, which is no more sixth year COVID players, right? So all the sixth yeah. year COVID players will be in that draft, plus all the players that don't have a COVID year and are on their fifth year. So there's going to be this massive class of players coming out that are going to be a ton of guys that have mid round grades that are going to be seventh to PFAs because there's going to be massive numbers, there's no more draft slots. There's only 250-ish draftable slots, right? And so if I'm a team and I'm projecting down the road, I want to load up with picks in the 26 draft. Load up with picks, right? And even in the 25 draft, because some of these players might be like, shoot, I don't want to be in the 26. I'm going to come out in 25, right? So accumulating picks for the future with looking down the road of what the landscape of college football and the players that are going to be coming out is going to be very interesting in this draft of what guys do, because there's going to be a ton of talent in those two drafts. So if you look at it from that perspective, hey, Justin Fields last year, we finally got him a true number one wide receiver in DJ Moore. Cole Komet finally started emerging as a true Pro Bowl type tight end. Maybe we go get him a more premier back, Right, They were running through running backs like crazy last year trying to find one. Yep. And let's build around Justin Fields and accumulate draft capital. I still think that's a very real possibility in Chicago if they don't decide to do that. Now, put on the flip side, Justin Fields goes somewhere. I think he's a viable starting quarterback in this league. I think his first two years in the league, he had no weapons. He had no help. It was just the Justin Fields show, and obviously that didn't work so well. But I saw some flashes, especially towards the back end of last year, that this dude is a legit number one quarterback in this league. I think a lot of those places would be really lucky to have him, Pittsburgh probably being my number one. I was just going to say that, dude. I'd love to see him in Pittsburgh. But I agree with you. Towards the end of the last year when he was kind of like, okay, I can show everybody what I can do. That's why when I'm looking at this, I kind of agree with Jay. I don't, I don't see them not trading out of the first pick and then just loading up in the rest of the draft and going, we're about to just protect the living hell out of this guy. We're about to find him a ton of options. We're going to give him a great running back. I mean, dude, he's a good player. 
get him with some good coaches, he could be a great player. Like he can move really well. He is also another big quarterback that can throw the ball, move around, run with it. These guys, I'm telling you, once they get ingrained in these systems, you just have to keep teaching them. I'd love to see him with the Steelers, but I'd also love to see him with Antonio Pierce out the Raiders because I feel like Antonio Pierce is one of those guys that just gives you confidence, right? Like, dude, watching him around the combine – and I know that somebody had like I saw a meme of a of an old GM that was like, Oh, I'm so sick of this Antonio Pierce. And I was like, dude, I love him. Every time he sees himself on the camera, he like waves. Every time you see him around, <laughs> he's always like super nice and stuff. You're like, dude, that's the kind of guy you want to play for. But then you see him in the locker room and he's like, Yo, we're gonna kick some teeth in, smoke some stogies at the end. Like I love everything about that. That's what I feel like Justin Fields needs. Someone that's like, dude, this is all bullshit. We're on a new team. You're here with me now. Let's just go out here and kick some people in the face. Like and that's what he needs. Similar to Kirk Cousins, he made yeah. a fresh start, right? Like, re- like, look at Baker down in Tampa this year, dude. He, like bounced around, <sighs> jumped around, and finally got himself in a really good position with really good receivers and took the team to the playoffs. And they kept Mike Evans. Like <sighs> I can definitely see, I can definitely see Justin Fields being that guy when you put him with, let's say Pittsburgh, right? You got George Pickens. Right, you've got that young tight end um, Fryermuth, right? Yep. Who really started emerging last year. Like you got Warren in the backfield, you got Najee Harris. Like that's more weapons than Justin Fields ever had, ever in his entire career in the NFL. Besides this year, he had DJ Moore, Cole Komet. Like that was it, right? That was it. They traded Clay- Chase Claypool because he was terrible. Like all these things, so I think that Justin may want a fresh start, but I think that if you build a good team around him in Chicago, he's a very viable quarterback to win you a lot of games. He's also there. There's so many examples, and I, I get why because you want to find out in the first year or two to take advantage of a rookie scale contract, right? Can this guy play? So quarterbacks get thrown into the fire right away, and then if they're not great after two years or three years, they're just okay on to the next. And the Bears of the Bears have gone through this a number of times over the years too, right? But there are guys that Baker Mayfield, Geno Smith is a more extreme example where if you can just be a little more patient or come back to a guy when he's a few more in, a few more years into the NFL, just because he's not great after two years, it doesn't mean he's a bust for the rest of his career, right? So how do you balance that? If you're the Bears too, you're not ready to pay Justin Fields 30, 35, 40, 45 million dollars a year. So there is value in starting the clock over with a Caleb Williams. I would say this. If they think Caleb Williams is better day one than Justin Fields, you take him. Just yeah, take, just take to. Caleb Williams right. and and go get like a third or fourth round pick for Justin Fields. But I also feel like we write quarterbacks off so early in this league right now. And Justin Fields deserves two or three more years with whether it's a new offensive infrastructure. Like I think about also, some of the like Kevin O'Connell with Justin Fields. You'd see a better version of Justin Fields. I, I think, think so too. And, and he had what two offensive coordinators, a couple different offensive coordinators. Like he's had no consistency in his career, right? Zero consistency, and that's so hard for a young player to develop under a zero consistent basis. If you're not going back into the same system as your second year as it was your first year, so now you're learning everything over again and and different moving parts. Like just getting him some consistency for his development, his growth. And we could see the strengths of it last year. That would be big too. And I know you're moving teams, so you're kind of starting over again. But when it's clean slate, it's different than just trying to be in the same organization and doing something different. So a clean slate for him would be really good. Russell Wilson is the next Mike. One point two is what I'm seeing. He's going to play for. There's going to be more that teams language, coming than you think. Oh boy! If Russell hey. Wilson's going to bake your team for one point two million and Denver's footing majority of the bill. There's going to be a lot of suitors if that's truly Watch what this. he's willing to play for. You ready? Saints. Going to need some cap-friendly something to come <laughs> and help them yeah. save the day. I when mean, you're Derek 80 Carr is million back, over. Derek Carr is back. Oh, well, he's with, back with until Russ. we trade for Russ Wilson or pick him up. I mean, dude, you're, you're telling me that the team that's the most over the cap right now, $80 million, isn't looking at the million-dollar quarterback going, we'll find a way. We'll find a way to get it done. So the That's... Saints are so the Saints are on the list. I'm looking at actionnetwork.com. The Saints aren't a favor, but the Saints are like in the list of 10 teams that So here's the order of how likely according to Action Network. Steelers are the odds on favorite. And by the way, Russ, I don't know if, if the transaction's official, but they're cutting him. So he's yeah. going to be available. I think like, it was it was official last night, I thought. Yeah. 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 And so so if that's the case, by the way, he could sign before Monday, right? Because anyone that's cut 
can sign before the actual league year and the and the unrestricted free agent. So you, but you would want to wait. This. I'll have to see. I'll have to see if he comes across the transaction report. If that's just like, hey, we're going to cut you, right? Or if they cut him now, like it and really just depends. They, well, they would also no... maybe do a post June first designation, right, right? Right. They could do that too to save some money. So Steelers are odds on favorite. Then in order it goes: Raiders, Falcons, Patriots, Vikings. Commanders, Buccaneers, if they don't get Baker Mayfield back. Titans, Giants. That's interesting. Because the Giants, you could what you could do is you could sign Russ for 1.2, not do anything with Daniel Jones' contract, just eat the eat the 40 million or whatever the base is this year, and then be done with it. And then the, well, the Panthers are on this list too. Next to the Saints, I don't know. I don't I mean, if he's going to be a, the back, a backup, backup quarterback, I guess. No, no he's, he's, he's not he's going not. to the Panthers. He's not going to the Panthers. Where, uh, should, I, where should he go? Where's the most fun spot? Uh, Saints, dude, you said Saints. Saints would be super fun. Just because you're pairing with some of those guys down there, I honestly think it'd be great. And listen, I know people are probably like, that's silly, but I can promise you Mickey Loomis is looking over there like, hey, hey, very rarely do we get bailed out. Very rarely do we ever get bailed out in this league. And here's a guy. Here's a guy. What's, what's, Here's cars, a guy. what's cars? Ca- I'd have to look at what cars cap hit and dead yeah. money is this year. Um, you could try and trade cars. Like they probably, just redid his. Contract. I feel like they just redid his deal. That's the one reason I don't. They did. Yeah, they. If so not, they, I could they see the Patriots to save too. Twenty three. They Patriots. redid. Yeah, so it's probably not the Saints. If they just redid, if they just redid cars deal, you don't bring Russell Wilson in to back up Derek Carr. No, it's just not. They lowered Derek Carr's cap hit to seven point two million this year with a, or I'm sorry, to uh, twelve point six million. His cap hit for 2025 is now 51. And his cap hit for 2026 is 61. They're just shoving money. Dude, just the- hey, kick the can down I'm telling you right road. now, in 10 years, we're going to do a special on how this all went sideways, and we were here for it. Like, they're going to be $400 million over the cap. Well, this is what happens with teams. When you I mean incredible. every year we talk about this. Every year we're like, man, the Saints over – like. If you get yourself in this position as an organization, it takes years to dig yourself out. And you're going to suck. Years. You're going to suck. You're going you're gonna to struggle year in and year out because you're going to have these top-end dudes making this money, but the back end of your roster is going to be undrafted free agents and veterans on minimum. Like That's what it's going to be. Yeah. Like That's why the Rams this year – I don't know if you guys know this. The Rams this year, besides Aaron Donald, right? So besides Aaron Donald on their defense – Every other starter on that defense was either on a rookie deal or vet minimum. Yeah, that's it because they've been in cap hell, right? They've been in cap hell, and they're starting to see the light. Like their their fingers are over the tunnel that they are pulling themselves out of. They're not quite out of it yet, but you can start <laughs> to see the light. The Rams are still digging, right? The Rams are, or excuse me, the Saints are still at the bottom. Like throw me the shovel. Yeah. Like they're still they're still trying to find the bottom. But I mean, so I can't see the Saints. The, the name on that list, though, is the Raiders. The Raiders, for me, are probably where Russell goes. And the reason I say that, too, Russell's a vindictive person. He's a quarterback. He's a trained killer, right? They all keep receipts. You don't think Russell would want to go in division, play against Sean Payton twice a That's year, a and be like, hey, remember you? You're paying me to play this game and beat you, right? To embarrass <sighs> Sean a little bit. Imagine the Raiders beat the Beat the Broncos with Russell Wilson, their starting quarterback, twice this year, right? Imagine that. You don't think people in Denver would be heads are rolling like we've paid this dude to beat yeah. us, and we're still paying him to beat us. But what right? is it? What is it about his his personality seems to have rubbed a lot of people the wrong way, teammates and various coaches. What is it about him? Though, is it just kind of the fake, you know, let's ride the? There's the, I don't know. The, I don't. I never played with the guy. Alex, you played with. Him. I played. With him. I loved him when I played with him. So no I, issues with him. I don't know. the The only thing that makes me worry about Vegas is you know he is a strong Christian man. He's married. Like I don't know if maybe he wants to put his life into the Vegas scene. Like I do think. Go live that, in Henderson. Go yeah, live. Yeah, but it's still Vegas. It still is. Like it still is what it is. And maybe he can get out of it. Maybe that's not a big as deal as I'm. I'm thinking it might be. But I think the Raiders are a very real spot for him because again they had Aiden O'Connell. As their starting quarterback, Jimmy G is going to be suspended for using PEDs. Like, there's a lot of moving Ooh. parts there at the quarterback position. If you can yeah. get him and pair him up with Devontae Adams 
and get some more weapons for him over there. I mean, they don't have a running back right now. Josh, Josh Jacobs, Jacobs he's a free right? agent. Yeah. Right. So start pairing up him. some things. Like, but I you think, could get him with Russ at one point two. Right. That's, that's a you, nice thing. You you buy quarterback at Russ at one point two. You'd be like, all right, Josh, we'll give you ten. We'll give you eleven. Right. We'll give right. you what you want. We'll give you what you, you better want run for a one you better or two be running. year and kind of figure this out again. I think that's a real possibility. But I didn't even think about the vindictive part. That would be so funny Dude, to have. Did you imagine killers, man. losing to a quarterback who your team is still paying? <laughs> God, I would be ripping lockers out of the locker room. Dude, Dude that contract extension he signed doesn't kick in yet until oh. next year, right? Dude, next and, year they own like 50. And you don't even know what, like, it's you don't wild. even think about what they 50. gave up. Dude, they gave up like two firsts, a third, a no fifth, Fant. and yeah. Noah Fant. <laughs> Dude, they gave up a lot. They and sold you still, the farm. You still owe him fifty million dollars <laughs> next year. <sighs> it's wild. Yeah, they, that one so stings. Even with a post June first designation, you By want to way, talk about digging your way out of a out of cap hell? I saw a report. Up that the Broncos were still trying to get him back, which, by the way, if anyone wrote that, we know you're lying. There is zero <laughs> chance that they're like, we're going to pay you twice in the same year. Like, <laughs> That's not happening. No, and I mean, Russell had that podcast I think he did with, uh, was it Brandon Marshall? Or, I mean, kind of talking about how the whole thing went down with uh, telling him that they were going to bench him but he didn't do the injury guarantee and the fact that he was like, I'm standing on this because I'm not setting a precedent for – future quarterbacks to have to be put in this position like a lot of respect for him they a lot of respect really easy to look out for number one there and he was standing on not just looking out for himself at the injury guarantee but not setting a precedent in the league that hey you sign a super max deal with a lot of injury guarantees there's a way for a team to avoid it so i think he did the right thing by there in denver and obviously it just didn't work out sometimes that happens in the league but no i he's he's out of there and i see i'm gonna call raiders right now putting my stamp on it raiders me yeah, raiders seem to make some raiders sense. would be sweet I, I am curious. You know, people have mentioned if Kirk leaves, do the Vikings maybe bring in Russell Wilson for one point two million? Maybe they draft Penix in the second round and they go edge rusher at eleven. But man, if Sh- Sean Payton has a very on schedule, in rhythm, like go through your progressions offense, and Russell Wilson had a hard time, and there's a lot of data that shows <laughs> he was barely making throws between the hashes, a lot of outside stuff. Kevin O'Connell, kind of the same way, needs it to be very much a certain rhythm. And I don't know that he's going to fit well with Kevin O'Connell. But, man, you're telling me $1.2 million? I know he's not the same Russ from five years ago, but that's a steal, right, in 2024? Yeah. Yeah. That's a steal for any team. Quarter, I mean, even the leadership in the room. Super Bowl winning leadership. If you think he'll be a good fit with a young player and he comes in and understands he's a bridge quarterback – Right, and I don't know if Russell agree to that, but if you can say, "Hey, we're paying you this, we're drafting the dude in the second, we want you to help develop him," maybe if you do well this year and things go great, we'll extend you. Right, you you put the preface of that like we will extend you if you take us to the Super Bowl, if you take us to the playoffs and things go great. Like this isn't just a one stop shop for sure, and you lay out some incentives in there for him to make some more money. I think it makes a great sense to put him with a young quarterback. Yeah, so well, we'll see, we'll see where Russell Wilson winds up. Um, there's more quarterback fodder that will play out over the next. Well, my my week question so. would be because I don't think this guy's leaving, but I'm curious to see where you guys would like to see Baker. He ain't going nowhere. I, I there's no chance. And once he's they leaving sign, anywhere. once they sign Mike Evans back, yeah. I think like, that was probably the first thing. Is like, hey, you get my number one guy that I can get myself in trouble and just huck it up there to find thirteen. I'll come back, dude. I don't think I don't think the Bucks let him walk out of the building. He probably commands anywhere between thirty and forty a year right now, which is that's twenty million below the top of the market. Where yeah. some of the big that's a that's, that's a, a nice that's, that's a, a nice, nice place to have a starting quarterback in this league for anywhere between thirty or thirty and forty. Dude, that's, he's he's twenty nine years old. He's kind of becoming the new Kirk Cousins from six years ago, where he he is like the front man of that second tier of quarterbacks. He's not going to carry your franchise like a Mahomes or a Josh Allen. You definitely need pieces around him. Right. But if he's not playing for $55 million, I can afford to put some pieces Correct. around him. Right. right. You can buy yeah. more people around him. And at the same time, I think a lot of him, too, is the way he is. Like, I feel like as a quarterback, he's one of those guys that's out there kind of rah, rah, jawing with you. He fits that Tampa scheme well. For sure. They are some bullies down there. Like, Todd Bowles and his defense running that middle dog cross every other goddamn play, like, just driving you nuts. And then you look at their offensive line, you're like, yeah, these dudes, they play well with him. Dude, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm weird to say this, but I'm excited to see what Tampa does this year with Baker. Like, 
obviously, I'm not a hater. I love Bakers from Cleveland. Like, dude, whatever happened in Cleveland, to see the resurgence of what he's done this year and to see him take this team that far, I'm like, dude, that's badass and awesome at the same time. Everyone loves a comeback story. There's no question, dude. Especially a quarterback that's actually pretty cool to, like, sounds like he'd be fun to be around. You're like, keep going. I mean, and, like, yeah, he's he's got a new family starting. His wife's pregnant. Like, I think he probably loves the Tampa area. A lot of people do. And if you have that one year type success like he had, you know, we talked a lot about Fields and Cousins maybe wanting a fresh start. Sometimes a fresh start's not the best thing for you when you're in that right. position in your career. Mm-hmm. Stay in the familiarity, stay in the routine that helped you have your career best year. Build off of that, right? And you're gonna make thirty million dollars. Like that's nothing to in shake Florida. a stick at, right? In Florida, that's nothing to shake no a stick. That's, that's big time. That's big time money, right? I think it makes a ton of sense for him to stay in Tampa. Plus, like you said, he, this team is like they got pretty far last year. Now it's like you you don't want to turn around and be like, ah, somebody else is gonna take us farther, dude. You got to the playoffs with this team, and you guys look pretty good. Continue that steam forward. Yep. The grass isn't always greener. No. So when we record next week, by the way, we're going to be a full 24 hours because we're going to do Tuesday morning, I'm guessing. But um, actually, you know what? I'm traveling next week, so we might we might alter the schedule. But it's going to be it's chaos right. next week. Chaos with free agency. Chaos we might wait a little week, bit. Dude. Might wait a little bit. See what Cannot happens. wait. Well, man. So thanks for hanging out with us here, O-Line Committee. Click that like button and the subscribe button on the YouTube channel. Five-star rating, positive review on uh, Apple and Spotify. This is an Offensive Line Lifestyle podcast.